I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I have seen the Lord's goodness, His mercies and compassion. I have seen the Lord's goodness. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent in my life every day. Oh Lord, you have been so good. You are so good to me. Oh Lord, you are excellent. In my life. Father Lord, we thank you, Lord, this morning. We thank you for another opportunity to come and learn at your feet. We thank you for the word of hope. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the words of correction that will come out to us this morning. Father, be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your power. Daddy, be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. The entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Daddy, this morning, make every one of us, everyone that is listening unto your word this morning, make us to be simple. And let your word be beneficial unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you take absolute and perfect control in the mighty name of Jesus. I surrender myself unto you, Father, O Lord, King of glory, Lord of lords. I empty myself before you, that you fill me with your words, undiluted from the throne of grace, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We worship and adore you. We give you all glory, Lord. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, omnipotent God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I welcome you to another broadcast from the throne of grace. We still continue with our title to topic for the month, grace and glory, grace and glory. Anywhere you are listening unto me, please turn with me to the book of 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter number 13 and the verse 14. Turn to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 13, and verse number 14. I want all of us to participate in reading this. Anywhere you are, just turn to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter number 13, and verse number 14. It says, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe you are echoing it with me now. It's something that we, are, we have known. We say it virtually every week, every, not even every week, every day when we finish prayers, when we finish Bible study, when we finish services, we say it. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. First Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse number 10. Turn with me again to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse number 10. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
Praise the Lord. But the grace of the Lord, but the grace of God, I am what I am. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. But the grace of God, which was with me. Quickly, we are going to see the topic that is captioned, taking the grace of God for granted. Taking the grace of God for granted. What does it mean to take something for granted or to take someone for granted? If you like, you can, you, you can caption this, this, this sermon to be receiving the grace of God in vain. Or you can, you can, make, you can call it making the grace of God of no effect. When I ask us to open to the book of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, and I ask us to echo it, I could see that everyone, will, everyone knows that, so to say. And one thing is this. It is common. And anything that is common is likely to be taken for granted. It's like, likely to be taken for granted. What does it mean to take something for granted? It's when you use or treat something or someone in a careless or indifferent manner. When you use something or treat something, when you treat someone in a careless or indifferent manner, not taking something serious, we are looking at what it means to take something or someone for granted, not taking it serious, underestimating the value of something or someone, undermining the power of someone, is when we are talking of taking something for granted. Now, the grace of God, we know is common, is available especially to the children of God. But we see that even the children of God, they sometimes take the grace of God for granted. And how, what, what, really, what really leads to taking something for granted? Number one, over-familiarization. When you are familiar with something or someone, you want to take that thing or someone for granted. Apart from that, when we don't pay attention or we don't pay any price, when we don't pay any price for something, we, we, we tend to take it for granted. You know, when you talk of grace, we call it something un unmerited favor. Something that you do not pay for is free, so to say, in quote. But one thing that we need to know, it is not cheap. It is not cheap. Someone paid for it. Somebody paid for this grace. Jesus Christ came and died on the cross so that this grace will be given unto us. When we, when, when, when we have something in more abundant, more, if you look, look at it, more abundant, when it is abundant, we tend to look at it and say, look, we tend to abuse it. And this morning, we are going to quickly look at situations, cases, or what we do, our actions that will lead us to take the grace of God for granted. And after that, we are going to see what we need to do. 
what we need to do in order not to take the grace of God for granted. Praise the Lord. The first one is this. When we fail to see or ignore the pricelessness of grace, then we take grace for granted. When we fail to see or we ignore it, you know, one thing is not to see it at all. It's another thing to see it and ignore it. Then we take grace for granted. In the book of Luke chapter number 23, Luke chapter 23 from verses 39 to 43, Luke chapter 23 and verses 39 to 43. You know, this is the story of two thieves that was with Jesus, that they nailed to the cross with Jesus Christ. One on the left hand side, the other one on the right hand side. And in verse 39 of Luke 23, the Bible says, one of the main factors which were hanged rain on him, say, if thou be Christ, save thyself and us. This particular one did not even see the abundance of grace that was present at that particular point in time. He didn't see it at all. So he took the grace of God that, he, that was abundantly with him then, he took it for granted. The same way that so many of us, we have taken this grace for granted. We, we, we listen to so many messages. We listen to so many sermons. But we still know that there are some things that if today that the, Jesus Christ comes or rapture happens, then we might not make it. We must not take the grace of God for granted. Some of us will say, no, I don't want to be born again now. Or I don't want to leave this action that I'm doing. I just want to enjoy myself now. Tomorrow, I know the grace is there for me. Yes, the grace is there. But if you take it for granted, it might be too late. If you take it for granted, it might be too late. For this particular thief, I wouldn't know where, which, right, which, which side it, this, this one was. Because we, we tend to say, okay... This happened to be the one on the left hand side. Well, the Bible, the Bible does not say that, but one of the thieves. Now, the second one, the second one did not take the grace of God for granted. We will come to that after this, after some time, before we, 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 wrap, we, wrap, we wrap up the sermon. But the one of the thieves took the grace of God that was abundantly available unto him. He took it for granted. I wouldn't know whether you also, in what way, are you taking the grace of God for granted? You have listened to sermons. Please, when you listen, today, if you have not given your life, just make up your mind so that you will not fall into the category of those who did not see or those who ignore the grace of God. Thereby, taking it for granted. Praise the Lord. The second way by which we can take the grace of God for granted is when we turn our back at God in the days of tribulations. When we turn our back at God in the days of battles. I don't know the tribulations you are facing now. I don't know the battles of life that you are facing. You are considering that God is not good to you. No. If you do that, 
or you say you don't even know whether God exists, you are taking the grace of God for granted. I'm talking to those who have seen and who have accepted the grace of God into their lives. But now, because they run into situations and they run into circumstances that is not palatable because they are suffering from pains, because they are suffering from that sickness, you are thinking that God is not powerful. God does not like you. God does not love you. No, don't take the grace of God for granted. Because if you do, if you say God does not have power to, to, to save you, you are taking his grace for granted. You are diminishing the power of the grace of God. The grace of God is abundantly available unto every one of us. In the book of Psalms, that there was this tribe that the Bible says they took the grace of God for granted. In the book of Psalms, Psalm number 78, Psalm 78 from verse 9, Psalm 78 from verse 9, the children of Ephraim the children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows turned back in the day of battle. The children of Ephraim being armed and carrying bows turned back in the day of battle. Now, Let's let let us stop here and let us see what really what really happened here. Now, when you're talking of the children of Ephraim, the Ephraim himself had the grace of God. He had the grace of God. In the book of Genesis, chapter forty-one, verse forty-two. Sorry, fifty-two. The book of Genesis. Chapter number 41, you know, in verse 52, thereabout, he was talking about how Ephraim was born. How Ephraim was born. Let's, okay, praise God. And the name of the second, call he Ephraim. For God had caused me to be fruitful in the land of of my affliction, Joseph was the one even talking here. He says, God had caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. So Ephraim means double blessings or multiple blessings. Multiple blessings. And it, fast forward, when Jacob was about to die, Joseph took Two boys to, 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 to Jacob, Manasseh, the first, and Ephraim, the second. And so pray for them. And uh, while it was, Jacob was praying for them in Genesis chapter 48. In Genesis chapter 48. Let's see from verse 13. Genesis 48 from verse number 13. Genesis chapter 48. And verse 13, and Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, towards Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his, le in his left hand, towards Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. Verse number 14, brought them near unto Jacob, and Israel stretched out his right hand, and lay it upon Ephraim's head. And who was the younger? And his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hand wittingly. For Manasseh was the first born. Now, when you look at it, there was cross blessing. There was cross blessings unto Ephraim. You know, the grace of God made Ephraim even to get the blessing of the first born. He was not the firstborn, but he got the blessing of the firstborn. 
It was through the grace of God. But along the line, and when you look at it, Ephraim, the, 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 the tribe of Ephraim, they were, they were powerful. They are very vast in military, in military acumen. How do I know that? It was from the tribe of Ephraim that we have Gideon. It was from the tribe of Ephraim that we have Joshua. In fact, it was from the tribe of Ephraim that Samuel came out from. So they are, they, they are well equipped. That was the reason why in, in Psalm 78, it was saying the children of Ephraim, they were harmed. They are powerful. They have everything. They have the grace of God. The grace of God was upon, upon Ephraim. But what really happened? They carry bows, but they turn back in the day of battle. They turn back in the days of battle. I don't know what you are passing through now. I don't know the tribulation you are, you, you are going through now. I don't know the sickness that you are battling with. But what I want to advise you is that don't turn your back against God. Don't turn your back to God. God is able. is able to deliver is able even to, 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 to save us from that affliction. He is able, abundantly able. Say, Ephraim, Ephraim, being harmed and carrying bows, turned back in the days of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in the law and forget his works and wonders, his wonders that he had shown them. They forgot the wonders. Why you are pondering on whether you want to turn your back against God now? Why don't you ponder? Why don't you think of the goodness of God that he has done for you? Why don't you think of the days of narrow escape? Why don't you think that some of you, that you started primary school together, that is elementary school. Some, you, you went to high school together. They are no more. But you are alive. You are alive today. Some that you, in fact, some that you woke up together with this morning, they are no more. But you are alive. The Bible says to him that is joined to all the living, he said, there is hope. He said, for a living dog, it's better than a dead lion. So, because you have, you have life in you, there is hope for you. There is hope. There is hope. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't take the grace of God for granted. Don't diminish the power and the grace of God. Don't receive the grace of God in vain. Don't make the grace of God of no effect. So when we turn our back at God in the day of tribulation, we take the grace for granted. Praise the Lord. I know the word is coming to someone this morning. The word is coming. It's telling you don't give up. It's telling you don't give up. You might have you know, that turbulence in your marriage. It is not the time to give up. You might write exams and don't pass it. And those of us that are doing exams, students, that is not the time. This is not the time for you to give up on God. You need to hold on to him. You must not turn your back onto him. You must not turn your back onto him. You are, you are battling with one sickness or the other, one ailment or the other, and you are looking at it and say, oh, I don't even know. I don't even think whether God will be able to do this. No. This is the time. You have to hold on to God. Don't turn your back against God. You have to hold on to him. Don't take the grace of God for granted. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, another way by which we can take the grace of God for granted is when we arrogate the power of God as our own. When we arrogate 
Where we, you know, yes, we are born again, yes. Yes, you, you went to the university, you have uh, certifications, you have this, you have that. That one doesn't mean you are the one doing it. If you think you are the one doing it, you are taking the grace of God for granted. If you think your success is because you are wise, you are taking the grace of God for granted. If you think that your, your strength, if you think that your health, if you think that the progress you are having is because of what you do of what, or what you don't do, you are taking the grace of God for granted. I'm not saying we should not, we should not do something. We should do it, but whatever that we do, you see, you see Paul. He said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Yes, I am trying my best, but I know that because my best is still best, it is just because of the grace of God. It is not because I know how to do it more than those who, who didn't succeed. We must not arrogate the glory of God to ourselves. In the book of Acts of Apostles, Acts of Apostles, chapter number 12, the story is told of Herod, Herod the king. And from verse number 18, Act of Apostles, chapter number 12, from verse 18, and upon a set day, the Bible says, upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, This is the voice of God, and not of man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him. Why? Because he gave not God the glory. And he was eating of worms and gave up the gold. Because he gave not God the glory. Because he thought because because of my oratory, then I've made it. They are saying, it, this is not the voice of man, but the voice of God. And he kept quiet. Yes, you have succeeded in your business. You have succeeded in your academics. You have succeeded in the area of life. You say, yes, I am born again. I am the child of God. And because of that, it's my power. It's my wisdom. It's my understanding. No, no. You are taking the grace of God for granted. It is time that we stop and say, God, to God be the glory. Because he is the author and finisher of our success. is the author and finisher of our progress. is the author and finisher of everything that we have. What, do, what, what is that thing that we have that is not given unto us by God? Don't let us take the grace of God for granted. Error did it, and immediately the worm hit him up because he failed to give the glory to God. He arrogated the glory of God unto himself. He arrogated the glory of God unto himself. Praise the name of the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar is another example here in the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter number 4. Daniel chapter number 4 from verse 31. Daniel chapter number 4. The king spake. Nebuchadnezzar was the one speaking now. Daniel chapter 4 verse 31. From verse 31, the king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon, my God? Can you see? Can you see the way? The pomposity, <laughs> praise the Lord, that he, he, he was using. Say, Is this not this, 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 this speak? This is the Babylon that I have made. Great Babylon that I have built the house of the kingdom. Daniel 4, 13. Thank you. He said, the king spake and said, is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power? And for the man, for the honor of my, of my, of my, of my power. 
of my majesty. And in verse 31, while the word was in king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O king Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And in verse number 32, in verse 32, the Bible says, and they shall drive thee from men, and, they, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until, until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomever he will. If we are arrogating the glory of God to ourselves, we are taking the grace of God for granted. Nebuchadnezzar, you see the way he was speaking. That is the way some of us are speaking now. You know, because, uh, I, you know, that exam, I read from, from, from beginning to the end. In fact, I climbed from 10,000 10, pages. No, it is not because of that that you pass. Yes, you have to, you have to walk because faith without work is dead. But that you sat down, you read, yes. But you might have made one mistake, one silly mistake or the other that might not make you to pass that exam. But God made you to pass it. Give glory unto God. Then you are in business, you succeed, and you are succeeding, and you will still succeed. Don't arrogate that glory unto yourself. Don't say because I know how to plan. Don't say because, yes, we are the ones, we are the management that know how to make the decision. No, don't do that because if you do that, you are taking the grace of God for granted. Nebuchadnezzar did it. Herod did it. And we saw what really happened to them. We are going to see Someone who did not do that. But before that, I want us to see, when we come, I'll quickly paraphrase that. In Act of Apostles, Act of Apostles chapter number 14. Act of Apostles chapter number 14. It was the, the story of Paul and Barnabas. In Act of Apostles chapter number 14. Let's start from verse 13. Act of Apostle. Then the priest of Jupiter, maybe to, to, to make it, to make it uh, let, let, let's start maybe from verse 10. Let's start from verse 10. Okay. They said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. These they saw a, a, a leprous man and he lived and walked and when the people saw what Paul had done they lifted up their voices saying the speech of Lyconia the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men that was exactly what they did to Herod. Oh, they say the voice of God and not the voice of man. And they called Barnabas, Jupiter, and Paul, Mercurius, because he was the chief speaker. In verse number 13, then the priest of Jupiter, which was before the city, brought oxen and gallant unto the gate, and will have done sacrifice with the people. Let us stay here, because verse 14, we are going to come to what we need, when we come to what we need to do, in order not to abuse or take the grace of God for granted, we are going to come to that verse again. But the question I want to ask you now is this, in what way have you been taking sacrifice? Ask yourself, in what way 
Have I been taking sacrifice? Yes, you are assisting millions of people. You are assisting, it might even be one person, it might be two. two. But they have turned you to God. They are offering sacrifice in court to you. Sacrifice of praise. In fact, they are even telling you, if not you, they wouldn't know whether they will be in existence. And you still keep quiet, you are taking that sacrifice. You are taking the grace of God for granted. What will I do without you? They are telling you all those things. And you don't quickly say, oh no, it is without God. You cannot do anything without God. You, 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 you continue to take the sacrifice, the sacrifice of praise. You continue to take it. You are taking the grace of God for granted. Praise the Lord. Let me quickly say one or two more. Then we quickly go to what are we going to do in order not to take the grace of God for granted. When we please people in disobedience to God's instruction, when we please people in disobedience to God's instruction, we are taking the grace of God for granted. We are taking the grace of God for granted when we please people in disobedience to God's instruction. The case of Saul the king came to mind. This man was sought for. God really told him, he told you know, the Samuel, said, go and anoint Saul. Notwithstanding that he was small, notwithstanding that the family was no, no, nowhere to be reckoned with, he said, go and anoint him. In the book of 1 Kings, 1 Kings, Chapter 9, verses 1 to 10, that's a long one, but I, I just, we can just write that one down. That was where God said, go and anoint him. And uh, when you look at it, 1 Kings, let's see 1 Kings chapter 10. Chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter number 10, from verse 3. 1 Kings chapter 10. Let me quickly praise that. Okay, praise God. Okay. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything that he eat from the king. Praise God. I think that's a mix up. That's a mix up. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's see 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. I want to read 17 to 19. First Samuel chapter 15, 17 to 19. Samuel said, though you a little was talking to Saul like that, because it came to a particular time when God gave Saul an instruction. Saul that was, that, that was, that was anointed king based on the great, absolute grace of God. He was not, in fact, he was looking for a lost sheep, so to say, in the wilderness. When he, he, he was anointed as king, he did not expect it. Just like so many of us, we did not expect where we are today. We did not expect where we are today. Even if it is by our background, we are nowhere to be found. We should not be among, among the people that will be taking, you know, decisions at the higher level or whatever, whatsoever. But, so, when God now gave him instruction to go and do something, what happened? He did otherwise. He disobeyed God. He disobeyed God. He took the grace of God in his life for granted. First Samuel 15, he said, though you are little, 
in your own eyes. Are you not the head of the tribes of Israel? The Lord anointed you king over Israel. And the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go, utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of God? And there and then, because of that, because he took the grace of God for granted, he disobeyed God because he wanted to please himself or the people, then the kingdom was taken away from him. What of Samson? Samson was a, a, a child of covenant. He was a child of grace. He was a child you know, of power. But what happened? Because he disobeyed God. He disobeyed God. What happened? He lost the power. He lost the power. So when we disobey God, when we disobey God, we take the grace of God for granted. Praise the Lord. Finally here, I want, to, for, I want us to see this. Then we go to what we can do. And what we can do is just, we have seen the examples of those who took the grace of God for granted. All we just need to do is just to, to see that we don't, we don't, we don't, go into their, into their mistakes as well. We have to use their mistakes as a lesson to be learned. When we walk headlong with dangers, when we, are, when, when, when we are aware of dangers ahead, when God told us there is danger, when we see it and we go headlong with that dangers and we say, oh, the grace of God is there for me. The grace, the grace is there. We are taking the grace of God for granted. A sister, a sister who is about to marry a brother. And the why during the courtship, the brother has, is practicing, you know, punching. He has already punching you. He's punching you now. And you say, oh, no, the grace of God is there. It means... You go ahead. You have seen it because God showed it to you. God, God makes you to see it before you enter it. But you, you, you enter it anyway. Then we are taking the grace of God for granted. Proverbs. Proverbs chapter number 27. Proverbs chapter number 27, verse number 12. Proverbs chapter number 27, verse number 12. A prudent man. For see it, the evil, and I did himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Proverbs 27, 12, a prudent man for see it, the evil and hide it himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Praise the Lord. What are we going to do in order not to take the grace of God for granted? Simple. We must not underestimate the power of God. We must not be over familiarized with the grace of God. We must not take the grace of God for granted. We must not fail to see. You are listening to me you have been listening to sermons, but today, don't take the grace of God for granted. If you have not given your life to Christ, today is the day you need to do that. If you have given your life to Christ, but you are backslidden some, some way or the other, today, this hour, this moment, is the time. You need to take a decision in order to return back to God. What again can we do? We must not turn our back at God in the days of tribulation. I don't know the, battle, the battles you are facing, but don't turn your back against God. 
What again can we do? We must obey God's instruction. And what again? We must not arrogate the power of God to ourselves. We must not take the glory of God. Because of our success, because of our health, because of our strength, because of our progress, we must not take the grace of God. We must not take the glory of God. And what again? We must not walk headlong with dangers when it has been revealed unto us. We must not walk headlong into dangers when it has been revealed unto us. Shall we bow down our heads? Let's bow down our heads and continue to tell God. I don't know which category you fall into. Yours might be, might be the category of those who are ignoring or are failing to see the power of the grace of God. Just like that thief, one of the thieves on the cross. But the second one saw, he saw and quickly took that advantage. And Jesus said, today, I say unto you, you shall meet me in paradise. Let us be like that of the second team that took the grace. He took it with all seriousness. He took it. Today, if you have not given your life to Christ, just take the grace. The grace of God is there for those people who are ready to take advantage of it. And if there's any way that we have been taking the glory of God, we have been arrogating it to ourselves, if there's any way that we have been disobeying the instructions of God, let us tell God, Father, we are sorry. We are sorry. We are sorry. And if you want to give up now because of the situation or circumstance, pray for the strength. Pray. And because his grace is sufficient for you. God's grace is more sufficient for you. Father, we thank you. We worship and adore you. You can see your children all over, anywhere they are now, anywhere they are listening unto, unto your words. Whatever the category that any one of us might be, Daddy, we still need more grace in the name of Jesus. Father, the enablement, the ability, in order not to take you for granted, that he give unto us in the name of Jesus. As many who are there and they say, oh, I want to give my life to Christ. Father, help them. And if they are taking decision, if we have taken that decision right now, just continue to pray unto God. Father, I need more grace not to go back, not to go back. Thank you, everlasting Father. We pray that your word seed we germinate, we grow and bring forth many fruit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Your name.